Let's talk about new blood pressure guidelines that are now recommending an earlier start to treatment and skipping alcohol. It's the first new set of guidelines since 2017. So joining me to share what this means for all of us is Prisma Health cardiologist, Dr. Michael Quire. Thank you for your time and your expertise. Of course, I'm happy to be here. Well, being happy to be here, now explain to me how this new range is changing and what that means for us as a patient. Yeah, the, the guidelines um, reemphasize some of the numbers we use for cutoff. So normal blood pressure being less than 120 over 80, and then a, a range of elevated blood pressure that's 120 uh, to 130 over 80. And then stage one is classified as uh, 130 to 139 over 80 to 89. And stage two, being anything greater than 140 over 90. Okay, so these new recommendations also talk about skipping out on alcohol, yeah. a popular beverage for some folks. Mm -hmm. How is alcohol and blood pressure connected? Yeah, so there's a lot of lifestyle modifications that were in the guidelines, and I think something that certainly caught the eye of a lot of people reading these was the um, stronger recommendations against alcohol cessation in patients with high blood pressure. Um, what we see most commonly is chronic use uh, of alcohol can lead to an increased risk of some cardiovascular disease, but also can make it difficult to treat the blood pressure. Um, it's not so much the alcohol intoxication, um, the euphoria, if you will, and being, um, you know, drinking, if you will. It's so it's more the chronic effects of it. And actually, what we see most commonly either in the hospital or in the clinics is when um, you know patients stop drinking. Um, there's almost sort of a withdrawal phase. And if um, patients are frequently entering a withdrawal phase, phase from their alcohol, their blood pressure can spike quite high. Ah, so tell to me about the smart technology that we can uh, check our blood pressure and how you say uh, some is good, some is maybe, you know, kind of tricky. Yeah, the guidelines really emphasize using a cuffed blood pressure. So either in the office with a manual um, or automated cuff with your provider or at home um, with a cuff that you could purchase at a pharmacy. Um, there's a lot of technology coming out that is, um, you know, would be deemed cuffless, things like smartwatches, and they're just not quite ready for reliable use yet, uh, at least as the data suggests. Okay, talk to me also, I was interested in the fact that they were talking about blood pressure and dementia mm -hmm. and the link there. Yeah, so, Prolonged high blood pressure, left you know untreated, not at goal, increases the risk for cardiovascular disease, plaque developing in certain arteries. That plaque can be in vessels that lead to the brain, so that could increase the risk for stroke. Stroke is a very common cause of dementia, but there's also been some evidence that um, hitting targets of less than 130 over 80 uh, for hypertensive management can reduce the risk of developing dementia later in life. Okay, high blood pressure runs in my family history, and I mm -hmm. always try to do things to mitigate the impacts. What advice do you have for folks when it comes to lifestyle modifications, getting outside, eating mm -hmm. what exactly? Yeah, whether this is to prevent the development of blood pressure or if you're in the elevator range or already diagnosed with high blood pressure, I think it's really important to focus on lifestyle modification. And what I talk to my patients about is um, you know, diets. There's a DASH diet that exists that emphasizes healthier proteins, things like uh, nuts and, and uh, fish and poultry, uh, avoiding bad fats or so trans fats, um, healthier oils, lower salt, and the guidelines really emphasize, which I found interesting, using salt substitutes like potassium chloride mm -hmm. in patients who don't have advanced kidney disease or at risk for um, developing high potassium from say other medications they may take. Um, sleep is really important. I think that's something we really don't uh, talk a lot about or enough about. And getting good sleep and being screened for sleep apnea can Oof. be really helpful. Sleep. Okay, that's hard for moms out there. <laughs> Dr. Cryer, thank you so much for your time. Of course, thanks for and having hey, y'all stay with us. We have more health headlines after this quick commercial break.